Hey, and welcome back to Toast. Today, we're going to be talking about something awesome in Ukraine. All right, Ukraine, a hot topic these days. We're not going to talk about that, but we are going to have two beautiful episodes of two amazing stories that I have in Ukraine in complete opposite areas of the country. So uh, next episode, you should really watch as well. This one is, you know, it, in its own kind of league, and the other one is just mind-blowing. Um, so please listen and enjoy, because this one is about a festival, actually, a festival in a big rock festival in the northwest of Ukraine, a small town called Lutsk. Um, recently, I actually just met somebody here in Canada who's from there, and it kind of just gave me the inspiration to, to talk about my experience there. So it starts off actually in Lviv. Uh, Lviv is just this amazing town, city, third biggest city in Ukraine. Absolutely beautiful. I loved it there. I want to live there. It's on the list of places to become my bases because it's just spectacular. Um, so I was living in Lviv. I had some friends and whatever, and I was seeing this lady and she was going to this festival up in, in Lutsk. And I said, wow, okay, well, I want to go to a rock festival. How, who says no to that? Um, so naturally, you know, I'm trying to figure out how do I get there? She already has her bus and her accommodation figured out. So I'm like, not re really joining like with her, but obviously I want to go and, and, and hang out with her, her and her friends there. So I was like, all right, like, you know, who's down to come with me? And essentially I find this guy called Tufik or Taufik. Uh, I assume that he's watching. So what's up? Shout out to you. Thank you for sharing my, my uh, posts on Instagram. I appreciate it a lot. Um, he's staying. So Tufik is staying with this guy um who has two cars one that he's using as like a rental and one that he's using for himself personally and i had spent a few days there um at some point i slept uh, at that house so you know i was kind of just like hey you know could we maybe borrow the car for like a night um we're just gonna you know we're gonna leave in the morning we're gonna go to this festival and we'll stay there all night and then we're gonna you know come back in the morning and so the guy was pretty chill he's from iraq and he was like yeah yeah sure no no worries um, you know, just just fill up the gas. And I were like, yeah, definitely, obviously. And so uh, me and Tufik head out to Lutsk. I think it was about two or three hours from Lviv. You know, I get to drive, get to scare him a little bit, um, driving like a Ukrainian. So driving insane <laughs> and just kind of overtaking these sketchy moments where, he, you know, you think you're almost going to hit the next car that's coming on to you, but it's okay. You always did the safe overtakes. On our way there, it was pretty cool because um, and Tufik actually has a video of this, which is we get stopped as we're like kind of crossing this bridge and it is a wedding. So they're like handing out champagne and we're like, wow, yeah, sure. Like give us the glass of champagne. So we, you know, take the little cups of champagne, we drink it and then they're like, oh, you need to give us money. We're raising money for the wedding. We're like, oh, OK, well, I'm like, I have no money on me. And Tufik has no money on him. He pulls out something like, I don't know, like 20 Rivna, which is not a lot of Rivna, by the way. It's like a dollar uh, or something like that. And so they're like, what the heck? This is not enough. So he's like kind of looking around the car and he ends up finding like some halls. They're like, that's not enough. And so he ends up just taking these glasses that he had and he just gives them the sunglasses. He's like, how's that? And they're like, yeah, this is great. So he borrows a little bit bit more champagne uh, it was a great little start to our little adventure eventually we get to Lutsk and we're kind of looking for where this you know festival is and we knew that it wasn't going to be in the center of the town because it is like an old beautiful historical town um, I can get into how it has this beautiful castle built in a Polish style so that you have the outer walls and the people who live inside different castle from the ones you see in most places but that's not what this story is about we're talking about Banderstadt. So Banderstadt is this festival named after Banderstadt, which was this kind of nationalist Ukrainian in the Second World War who stood for and fought for and led or helped led, lead the party and movement for Ukraine. So anti-Soviet, anti-Nazi. They were in Ukraine. They were in the, this part of Ukraine. Lviv and you know Lutsk are in this very kind of Ukrainian-speaking part of Ukraine that is very, you know, nationalistic. And I believe that they should be, especially considering their their history and also their present. So um, essentially, Banderstedt was like the, the first kind of like rebel. He led the movement. They actually never lost. They, they never ended up losing to the Nazis or losing to the Soviets. Ukraine just kind of got like annexed as like an entire area. And that was kind of part of it. And that's how they became part of the USSR. 
So Banderstadt is kind of like this, you know, Ukrainian nationalist thing. And so I was like, okay, this is like, this is going to be intense. It's a rock festival. It's always like political when it's rock. And now it's named after like this political guy from like 70 years ago, who is clearly a badass. And, you know, we get, we kind of find the festival grounds and I, you know, turn to my, my friend Tufik. Tufik is from Morocco. So naturally, you know, n not the richest country. So we were kind of thinking, you know, can we sneak into this festival? Because that's what people do. They sneak into festivals, not because they can't afford it, but because they'd rather spend money on the beer instead of the fucking ticket. So we're like, hey, let's look for a way to sneak into the festival. So we're kind of like walking around, looking if there's like an entry. At some point, we find this place. It was perfect spot. And it's like right behind all of the porto potties. That's where, you know, because it's fenced in, but like the porta potties have the space between the fence and the porta potties. I said, well, that's great. They can't see us. We just need to climb. And then we're behind the porta potties and we just kind of walk out and act natural. So, you know, we smoke a couple cigarettes, just waiting for the guys, uh, the security guys, you know, kind of we're keeping a watch on them, making sure they're not looking at us. But there are a lot of people outside of the festival grounds there, like eating and just drinking and enjoying the music from afar because it's only one stage. So it wasn't like a kind of festival with like all of these stages and whatever. It's not, you know, quite popular enough, but it was still very big and the stage was awesome. And so we climb in, we get in and we're like enjoying it all. And in this festival, you know, there's like all the guns, like all of the historical guns, current guns. They just have them all on display. You could like, you know, toy with them, play with them, whatever. They're, not, they're un unloaded, you know, safeties are on and uh, cartridges are empty. So essentially like you know two fix kind of holding it and i'm like oh you know i don't know how these you know ukrainians are looking at the arab holding a gun you should probably put that down two um nobody had any reaction but i just thought that it was a pretty funny moment i got a nice picture of it um so what ends up happening you know like uh, naturally we meet up um with my friends and there's like a couple girls and and we're like all right this is cool and then i said hey by the way i, I noticed like I, I can't find any alcohol in here and then you know she turns to me and she was like jordan i told you this is an alcohol drug substance free festival there's nobody's taking anything and i like lost my mind i lost my shit like i was like rock festivals need alcohol like you need to go crazy you need to be able to be drunk and moshing and all of this stuff and i like i was so disappointed so like ah no we can't do this we can't rock we can't you know party without alcohol i was so dependent on it i suppose i didn't realize how much i was luckily you know the guy who i am i had a bunch of weed in my pocket so i just kind of rolled a couple of joints i kept me in too thick a little bit buzzed uh for the entirety of the the shows and yeah we still had a good time um and so you know we kind of partied a lot we we did a lot and then the most intense thing was the mosh pit and so to kind of give you a little bit of perspective a mosh pit if you've never been to one is like the dancing at a rock concert except it's not really dancing like you it's not not dancing but it's not really dancing because you're really just running around and pushing each other and you're you're enjoying the music i still technically i still go to the beat you know like i try to move and push to the beat but you're getting shoved and punched and whatever it is you're getting tossed around and and it's a lot of fun a lot of fun and a you know high chance that you get bruises <laughs> and whatnot um so you know, do it at your own discretion and be careful. But uh, it's a lot of fun. In Ukraine, though, the way the mosh pit works is like there's kind of like this center of the mosh pit, kind of like this thing right here. And everybody's kind of going around the circle, always, you know, going clockwise. And essentially, you know, they're, they're following like an order, whereas in like in Montreal or in like, you know, the States or all the mosh pits I've been to, it's just chaos. Like there's no like there's no rhythm to it. It's just everybody's like just pushing and punching and whatever it is. And um, and by the way, it needs to be said in mosh pits, when somebody falls, everybody stops and they pick them up. That's that was in Ukraine. That was in that is in Canada. That's a common courtesy. So people are, you know, as long as they're being quite nice the violence is okay. Um, so I thought like the order was very interesting because then what you had was like, you could kind of predict it, but then when the, you know, the, the heavy part starts or when the chorus kicks in um, and there was this one band called Karna when they played, like, like everyone just went nuts. But essentially when that heavy part stick comes in, like it's like kind of, it slows down. It's kind of like progressive metal or rock or whatever it is. And everybody slows down. They kind of make some space. And then it's like, 
when worlds collide and everybody just knocks into each other. And it was, it was so much fun. I, I can't recommend it enough. Anyways, very interesting mosh pit because also within the mosh pit, like I said, it's in a very nationalistic place. And this has nothing to do with the representation of Ukrainian people, but there are people who are um, racist and who had swastika tattoos and things like that, which really pissed me off and also kind of opened my eyes and made me, you know, mosh a little bit harder when I saw those guys. And often they were kind of walking in the opposite direction. So everyone's kind of going like one way and they're going the other way. And so, yeah, there was, it was a, an interesting experience and it was, it was fun to kind of push those guys, I would say. Now, what ended up happening is, you know, we had so much fun the first night. We were like, oh, we we're supposed to drive back to Lviv now. Dude, like, just just me message him. Let's see if we can keep the car for an extra day. And um, we did. And he said it was it was cool. And we actually had slept in the car that night. We didn't find any accommodation. We just went straight to the festival. And when the festival was over, it's like a small town. Nothing was open. We had no hotels, <laughs> nothing. So Tufik and I just like found I found a park to park next to and we just crashed in the car. So then we found a hotel for that day because we're like, OK, well, we're staying for the night. We get a hotel, we shower, I pre-roll a couple of joints. And I said, Tufik, we have just enough time right now to go and buy a bottle of vodka and put it inside a water bottle. And then he's like, "What? why? And I said, well, because I want to go to the festival and I want to do it right. And I don't care if we're the only two drunk people there. Let's do it. Let's get the alcohol in and we bring it in the, as a w bottle of water. So it's not, you know, suspicious when we drink it. So we end up going, we buy a couple bottles of water. We actually drink one during the day. That's when we were like exploring the castle and all of the beautiful things. Lutsky is a very nice town. There's a lot of green area. I mean, it's Ukraine. It's beautiful. I suggest you go visit. Um, but that's not part the, the point. We end up, obviously, you know, I, I roll a couple joints. We smoke one during the day. We would go explore the castle. We go, we, fin we finish one bottle of water and we put our vodka inside and then we do the same thing. And we kind of go around and jump over at the porta potties to, to get into the festival illegally again. Um, but it was OK, you know, like we didn't feel like we were breaking the rules too, too hard. And, you know, Banderstadt would probably be proud of us for just like standing up for the sake like, hey, we want to enjoy it. We don't necessarily need to pay. Um, so we were breaking all the rules. We were smoking weed. We we're drinking vodka we're sneaking in. We're not paying for anything. It was absolutely horrible. And I mean, they were they were saying like, you should look out for people, you know, on the stage. They're like, you should look out for people who are not wearing bracelets or the right colored bracelets or whatever it was. And we're just there like, mm hmm. Yeah, we should probably hide our wrists a little bit or whatever. Um, it ended up not being a problem. I don't think anybody was searching for it or anybody cared, but it was a really cool festival. You know, like um, one of the things that I really liked about this and about the, the reason why i'm telling this story is that like you just have the whole festival culture you know instead of beer i guess they had kvass which is like this ukrainian or i don't know maybe let's say soviet or eastern kind of drink which is like bread that's like uh fermented but it's non-alcoholic so you have like a bubbly bread drink i don't know how to describe it it's it's bread in liquid form and it's pretty good honestly it's not the best but it's pretty good so you know we were drinking kvass i was like i want something that's like kind of like beer so let's get the kvass there's a lot of georgian food because you know ukrainians and all you know ex-soviet countries they love georgian food and i love georgian food i ended up going to georgia like a month after this um so essentially um yeah i got to enjoy some georgian food got to enjoy the festival like nasty porto potties and partying and Push, pushing and shoving around and being nervous show and i showed tufik a mosh pit he followed me into a mosh pit you know and the crazy thing is that at some moments in this mosh pit you know um it's it's not just like moshing it can also be kind of like skanking which is like soft moshing just kind of pushing running around in a circle um to more reggae kind of things and there was some rap and stuff so it wasn't always so heavy um but tufik came in and at some point, like everybody just starts kind of holding hands or, or like putting like, ar like sh arms over shoulders and backing up. And you're just making the circle bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And everyone's just getting in and making the circle bigger and bigger and bigger. And essentially at some point, like, you know, they hit that riff or they hit that chord and everybody lets go and charges the middle. And everybody just kept doing that. 
um, for a few bands, you know, like they just create these crazy circles and they just like make the worlds collide into each other. And it was just absolutely insane to experience that type of mosh pit because usually I guess at rock concerts, you kind of have circle pits, but it's like for one song, you know, someone will like Alexis on fire or Lincoln park or whatever it is, is going to say like, Hey, we're going to make a circle pit for this song, start running in a circle and don't stop. But this guy, these guys were just doing it the entire time. So yeah, it was really cool. Super grateful to have gone to Banderstadt in Lutsk and um, enjoy Lutsk, which was a town that I really wanted to see anyways. So uh, kind of two birds, one stone situation. And uh, for a festival in 2021, when a lot of the world, especially the country that I'm sitting in right now, were under lockdown and all of these crazy things, I was kind of living freedom without any thoughts of masks or regulations. So, um, you know, spread those wings and fly if you can. So um, that's pretty much it for this story. But next story, you really should listen to. It's insane what animals they have in Ukraine. You would never believe it. Spoiler alert, they're from Africa. Toast out.